Good evening. I'm still reporting on climate change. Rob Schmidt, who anchors the 7 p.m. news on Newsmax, did a superb interview of the co-founder of Greenpeace, Dr. Patrick Moore, last night. Dr. Moore tore into the unscientific hype that global authoritarians are using to tear apart the civilized world of the sovereign states in the West, all the while ignoring the total non-participation of the world's largest polluter, China. Patrick Moore is the co-founder of Greenpeace, and Mark Morano is the founder of ClimateDepot.com. Patrick, been looking forward to speaking with you. Um, as the founder of Greenpeace, um, I think our viewers are going to be shocked to hear your take on the whole idea of global warming, climate change in this country. Go ahead, sir. Well, the fact of the matter is, this is one of the coldest periods in Earth's history. It's called the Pleistocene Ice Age. We have been in it for 2.6 million years. There have been 40 or more glacial advances covering all of Canada and Russia with a mile thick ice sheet. It has re retreated now, starting 10, 20,000 years ago, and we are in an interglacial period. But it is still one of the warmest periods in sorry, coldest periods in Earth history. It's a known fact that there was no ice on either pole for the 250 million years before this happened, when, the, when life flourished through all of this time. And the other thing that is so crazy is that CO2 is, had dropped to the lowest level it has been in the history of the Earth during the most recent glacial advance as the oceans absorb gas when they cool. So we, we, we are in a, a situation now where the plants would still like at least twice as much CO2 in the atmosphere as they're getting. How is, and how is this, make, and not to interject, but how on earth, Patrick, is this all going over everybody's head? How is this all being ignored? I mean, you, you, you're, you're not making this up. I, I, I assume you're you know, legitimately no, stating facts here that are all being ignored to push this agenda. How is that happening? 80% of the research in science is done in the universities in the United States. Almost all of that money is coming from governments, politicians getting their bureaucrats to give the scientists money. That's a very quiet process. But what they're expected to do is to support the catastrophic global warming narrative, which is a total lie. Do you really think that another half a degree uh, Celsius, about 0.7 five point one point points eight degrees fahrenheit is going to destroy the planet like that's the it, you only have to go 30 miles further north right. to get uh, a, a climate that is 0.5 degrees cooler right it, it's absolutely insanity for anybody to believe that it's, this earth has been much warmer in the past and and there were there, there was much this, more life on the planet in the past. Schmidt then brought on Mark Merlano, the founder of ClimateDepot.com. Before our fossil fuels caused global warming, they caused global cooling. In the 1970s, they literally had a primitive version of the Green New Deal proposed literally things like climate tipping points, blaming bad weather on man-made global cooling. They wanted to geoengineer the climate, add soot. They wanted national sovereignty to be limited. They wanted economic freedom to be taken away. So what happened in really in 1988, the United Nations formed this climate panel to deal with global warming. And they had to find that CO2 was causing a climate crisis because if they failed to find that scientifically, they had no reason to exist. And as a bonus, when the UN could hype the, the fear of climate change by CO2, they also got to be in charge of the solution with all these UN conferences. So what happened is the fix was in and the United Nations sets the agenda. We had the UN say last fall that we own the science and we partnered with Google to make sure search returns come back only with UN favorable uh, uh, scientific views on, on internet. So this is how they create a consensus. The same thing we saw in COVID. They ban, censor, deplatform the scientists who dissent, and they only promote the ones that are approved by the and state. So what do you say to people that I'm sure call you a kook and say you're crazy or that you have an agenda? What is your response? Well, science isn't about calling people names. I mean, they call us deniers. We don't deny that there's a climate. This, this, this climate of this earth has been through so many changes, but most importantly, about 1700 was the peak of the Little Ice Age. That's over 300 years ago. The earth started warming again then. 
It wasn't for another 150 years that any fossil fuels exactly. were used to any extent. And it has not accelerated in its warming during this period yep. of fossil fuel use. Fossil fuel use has grown exponentially. The world's temperature has just continued to go up very, very slowly, so far by one degree in 300 years. And they're worried about another 0.5 degrees causing uh, some kind of ridiculous tipping point. The fact yeah. is every molecule of CO2 we put into the right. atmosphere right. came from there in the first place it, because fossil fuels are made out of carbon that were in was in the atmosphere as CO2. Yeah. All the fossil fuels yeah. were made from life. It's and a, when we amazing. are burning it's these, yeah. we're just putting them back into the atmosphere right. and ocean where they came from in the first place. I'm still reporting from just outside the Citadel of World Freedom. Good day.